Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new update from RRG Research for Monday the 23rd of May. And I'm recording it on Friday the 20th, just before the market opens. My name is Julius de Kempenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. I'm running RRG Research together with my friend and colleague Trevor Neal in the UK. Anyway, let's kick off with a quick overview of what happened last week and what we can expect for the coming week. If we kick off with the view of world stock, stock market indexes, indices, um, we're looking at the weekly RRG at the moment. And uh, be, be careful, this is a relative picture. So it shows you relative strength of those markets, not necessarily uh, price trends, because I think we all know what happened last week. Um, quick look at it. What we can see is that the UK is actually doing really well. Australia is holding up well. The Japanese Nikkei index is coming in quickly, pouring into the leading quadrant, and we'll see some strength from um, the, the European market stocks index led by the DAX, the, the German DAX and the French CAC index. Where's the weakness? The weakness is very, very clearly in the US. Um, if you look at the US indexes, then we've got the NASDAQ, which is in the lagging quadrant and uh, it hooked back down, uh, powering further into the lagging quadrant. We have the S&P 500 index, which is turning around and moving into weakening and heading towards the, leading, the lagging quadrant. And we now have the Dow Jones Industrials Index that is very early stages of rolling over. So my view is that the US markets are the weakest. If you look at this universe, that is. If we bring that to a daily RRG, then we see a little bit more of a pronounced picture. And here you definitely see the weakness of the US. Here's the NASDAQ, here's the S&P 500, here's the Dow Jones Industrials. These are the three indexes that are uh, very clearly Oh, oops, that's my bad. Very clearly rotating towards the lagging quadrant. It's indicating that they're losing relative strength versus the rest of the world. All the greens here are the Asian markets and the European markets. And you see a little bit more erratic movement. That's because of the volatile swings that we had over the last week. But I think the general picture here is very clear that the US is underperforming the world. Um, so that is a market where you would be looking for short positions and you can offset that with longs probably in Europe, uh, maybe in Asia. Now, last week I showed you a trick where we, um, instead of using, in this case, the MSCI World as the benchmark for the RRG's chart, where we use a 0% uh, a performance, which makes the RRG chart um, looking at absolute price, and, and that is probably what's, what's better in your mind. Here you see what's happening in the world right now. All these markets, all these international stock markets indexes are on the left-hand side of the graph, uh, which means that they are in downtrends versus the benchmark, and the benchmark here is a 0% line, which is a straight line. Uh, basically, we're looking at absolute price performance, and then you can see that all these markets are now in downtrends uh, when measured in price. Obviously, if you're a trader and you trade CFDs, you can benefit from both long and short side. That's where these RRGs based on relatives come in to help you make choices and probably find some interesting pair trades. If I quickly take a look at the S&P 500, it's obviously, well, arguably the most important index in the world. Then we see that that topping formation has completed. Um, and we're resting at a support area around 3,900. I made that a very thin line because I don't think it's a very major area of support. I think the more meaningful support levels are coming in um, around 3,500, maybe as low as 3,300. If we look at the daily version of the S&P, then you can see that um, we had that break, which was obviously the first signal. And then we got a, uh, a few days of a very strong rally where 4100 was going to be um, just above 4100 was going to be uh, a resistance area. All support becomes resistance, but we didn't we didn't even get there. The peak came in um, uh, uh, <clears throat> at 4090, just below 4100, and we're now already pushing against that lower boundary. 
if that lower boundary, that's the crucial part of uh, for for I think today, which is Friday, and I, I don't have that data yet, uh, but today and the coming week when you're listening to this, if we break below 38, 60, 38, let's round it off 38, 50, then we'll probably see an acceleration lower to the, the, to the levels that I just mentioned. But we gotta pay attention to a little bit of a positive divergence that's building up here in the RSI index, the, the relative strength index. And that could, that's a positive sign. That is usually a sign of a, a pause and a decline, maybe a little rally. That could bring us back to that 4,100 area, possibly a little higher. But if you look at the big picture of the S&P 500, I think that we can safely conclude that we're in a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows on a weekly basis. That ain't gonna uh, change anytime soon, I'm afraid. And that means that whatever we see on the daily charts should be judged as temporary rallies within the framework of a longer term downtrend on the weekly chart. I quickly want to take a look at the German market. We haven't talked about the German, German market in our updates. And, and obviously that's a, a very important and a big market in Europe. If you look at the RRG, these are the stocks that are currently in the RRG Momentum Plus basket. That's the uh, pretty much the only basket that is showing an underperformance over a 30 day period right now. But there are some things that we can learn from it, um, especially the, the fact that there are a few stocks that are moving in a top right direction. And that's RWE. Uh, and also here you see Bayer and you see uh, Wacker. These are stocks that are moving in a top right direction. That's pretty good. And then we've got the stuff that's moving to the lower left, which, which is better avoided. I've done a little bit of homework and I selected two stocks uh, to inspect on an individual chart. And the first one is obviously RWE, because I, I think it's doing really well. And then also um, Befesa, B-F-S-A is the ticker symbol. And that's, that's pointing to the northeastern direction, which in generally is good, but it's on the left-hand side of the graph, which means that it's in a relative downtrend. And very often, especially when they have a low reading compared to the other, compared to the other um, elements on the chart, there is a pretty high risk that this is rolling over. And then, and these are the uh, the rallies within a downtrend. And I think that Bifisa is one of those stocks, making it uh, a good candidate to uh, to look at for for a weaker performance. While RWE is a candidate that is is moving nicely into the leading quadrant. So if we if we start with RWE and you look at the price chart, you can immediately see why it is moving into the leading quadrant. We had this. Uh, it's already in an uptrend for quite a while, and now we've just broken above that horizontal resistance area, and it looks as if we're holding up quite well there. And that makes uh, RWE a very interesting stock. Uh, potentially going to higher levels uh, in the coming week. Now, the other side of the coin is Befesa, because here you say this is a weekly chart because the, I thought the, the daily was a little bit too condensed. And here you can very nicely see the break from that broad range. This is a more than 10 euro range, which is, which is now broken to the downside. And very often you can project the level of the height of that range to the uh, below the lower boundary of that range. That brings us to an area around 45, 46, maybe even lower. But I think that 45, 46 could be a good target area because that's a nice area of support, which is formed by peaks that were set in 2018. So uh, a major break for Befesa, while uh, RWE is breaking higher. Two German stocks looking to, uh, to be set for a nice move higher. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show and I'm looking forward to see you again next week, same time, same place.